Thank you. Uh, I yield back. Thank you. Senator Paul. Dr. Fauci, it's, it's disappointing for you to suggest that people who dare to question you are responsible somehow for violent threats. Realize that by attacking me, you're attacking the one member who actually has suffered from violent attacks. I was at the ball field today. Steve Scalise almost died. I was 10 feet away from a staffer who was shot in the leg. We had over 160 rounds of semi-automatic weapons fired at us, ammunition. So for you to somehow suggest that somehow I or people who dare to oppose you are responsible for threats, that's insulting. The person who shot at us and almost killed Steve Scalise was a uh, rabid supporter of Bernie Sanders. But the one thing you'll find if you look at the record is that not one of us accused Bernie Sanders of being responsible for that. So this is the kind of ignorant sort of personal attacks that you've engaged in. You engaged in these attacks with fellow scientists. Not only was it three scientists from Harvard, Oxford, and Stanford that you chose to malign, 50,000 scientists and medical doctors signed this petition. And what they wanted was something that most Americans think is pretty reasonable. It's a different kind of approach. Instead of saying that everyone is the same and everyone should get the same treatment and everybody ought to just get vaccinated, what it did is it said that the death rate for this disease is extraordinary in the risk being different according to ages. So if you look at an 80-year-old, it's at least a thousand times greater death rate than it is for a 10-year-old. So wouldn't we want to say that, well, we're going to assess the risks of each individual and have the treatment according to that, or would we just simply say everyone should be vaccinated? The death rate for kids under 18 is about one in a million, uh, a little bit less than the chance of being struck by lightning. We don't yet know fully whether or not kids who have already had COVID might be at risk for some of the side effects of the vaccine. Still needs to be explored. But for a kid under 18 who's already had COVID, see, it's death rate of about one in a million, even if you haven't had a disease, even if you haven't had COVID, it's about one in a million. It's extraordinarily uncommon for a child to die. If you've already had the disease, it's probably a great deal less than that. Many Americans wonder why you've steadfastly refused and worked with others to try to hide any kind of knowledge of natural immunity and how it would affect our decision making. So for example, you know, you have a 10 year old kid and his mom comes up and all of a sudden he gets myocarditis from the vaccine and dies. Admittedly a rare complication, but what are you going to tell her when she says, well, he had COVID three months ago. I mean, why would you force me to vaccinate my kid? Why would you force me to vaccinate my kid without even checking to see whether he's already immune? Now, the idea of natural immunity is, is the idea upon which vaccines are based. We've believed in, and all, all of medicine is based on, the idea of acquiring natural immunity. People often respond and say, but you don't know how long it'll last. Well, we don't know how long vaccines will last either, and that doesn't make us anti-vaccine. We do know that the vaccines are, are waning very quickly in potency. We do know that the vaccine against Omicron really isn't preventing transmission. You've noticed that the debate has shifted, and the debate is now talking about trying to prevent hospitalizations and death. And I agree with those statistics. I think it's a good idea if you're at risk to be vaccinated. I've always been pro-vaccine. I'm just simply against authoritarianism and against mandates. Mm -hmm. The anger that's developed with you, Dr. Fauci, is that you don't want to give us advice. You want to tell us what to do. Mm -hmm. You think you are the science, and that anybody responds to you, how dare you, how dare you criticize science? as if you somehow are science. That kind of arrogance, that hubris is really, that's where the anger's coming towards you. If you were one doctor among hundreds of doctors in the government who gave advice, I don't think anybody, people might object to your advice, but there wouldn't be such a degree of anger. But you are so certain that you're right that you're not willing to hear anyone else. Three epidemiologists, of which you are not even an epidemiologist, but epidemiologists prominent in their field, Oxford, Stanford, and Harvard. You maligned them. You spoke openly with Dr. Collins, and you did not disagree that let's paint them as fringe. You went after them and said, we will do a public takedown, not in Science or Nature or Lancet, in Wired, in The Nation, a left-wing publication. You've engaged in base politics. You wonder why there's so much anger? You're not an objective scientist. You, you've lost that long ago. And so many of the things that people want, it's like they want to know why you're forcing their children to be vaccinated when 95% of people at risk have been vaccinated. 
Over 95% of people over 65, it's a huge voluntary success. And yet you won't rest until you force every child to get this. So yes, there's a great Senator deal Paul, of dissatisfaction with you, and many people want you to go, but nobody wishes you violence. Senator Paul, your time has expired. I will use one time of my remaining five minutes to allow Senator Fauci to respond. Thank you very much. <laughs> Dr. Madam. Fauci, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Dr. Murray. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So uh, first of all, um, Senator, again, at, at a hearing such as this, where there are almost 900,000 people in this country have died from this outbreak, you have chosen to just personal attacks on me that go back to multiple hearings. And again, just for the record for people to check, I have never said, take people down in that email. It was an email that was sent to me. See, and again, I mean, agreed with Dr. Collins in the email. Senator Paul, this is my time. You know, you personally attacked me and the things that you do are incorrect and proven incorrect. You've publicly accused me at a hearing of being responsible for the death of five million people when there is not a single, single shred of evidence that anything that was done with the NIH had anything to do with COVID-19. You talk about things like gain of function. Dr. Fauci, I'm, I'm going to let you re con, uh, respond uh, continually, but I think you have responded, and I appreciate Okay, I appreciate the time. I, th thank you very much, Madam Chair. But I just want to say I'm actually stunned by the amount of misinformation. The only thing I have ever done, and this will take 20 seconds, if you look at the things I've said, they've been to support the recommendations of the CDC, of their advisory committees, and of the FDA. I've told people that it's important to get vaccinated, to get boosted, to wear a mask, and to be prudent. That's the only thing I've said. I haven't dictated anything that's only a monolith with me. It's always public health practices. And anybody goes back over any thank, record of me, they know that. Thank you, and I will retain the balance of my time. Thank you very much.